नमस्कार हेलो एवरीवन इन द प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस द सॉफ्टवेयर बेस्ड सॉल्यूशंस फॉर क्रिटिकल सेक्शन प्रॉब्लम इन दिस सेशन आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस हार्डवेयर बेस्ड सॉल्यूशंस सो इन दिस सेशन आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस थ्री हार्डवेयर बेस्ड सॉल्यूशंस द वेरी फर्स्ट इज डिसेबलिंग इंटरप्ट next we i'll be discussing test and set instruction and then swap instruction so these are very important hardware based solutions now let's discuss the very first one disabling interrupt i hope you must be aware about what is an interrupt so interrupt you consider like when a process is executing okay in order to switch the cpu control or ask the process to perform or act as an on an event there are certain modules like interrupt so disabling the interrupt can help us in process synchronization so let's quickly discuss how the disabling of interrupt can be utilized to synchronize two processes so that in mutual in critical section mutual exclusion can be maintained so it is a technique to prevent the interrupt from being processed by a computer system so if a process does not deal with the interrupt process will not be interrupted so when a process is inside the critical section the meaning is no other process will be able to interrupt the process and if the executing process will not be interrupted another process will not be allowed to insert inside the critical section so mutual exclusion can be satisfied right it is often used in critical section of code where race condition or other synchronization issues can arise right so if multiple processes are allowed to interrupt each other then there can be a problem right interrupts are temporarily turned off so please do remember we are turning off interrupts temporarily not permanently on the cpu while a critical section of code is executed so during the critical section execution the interrupt will be disabled once the process come out of the critical section the interrupt will again will be enabled so once the critical section is complete interrupts are re enabled okay so this is the overall mechanism now when we implement such kind of mechanism there are certain drawbacks disabling interrupts can reduce the responsiveness of the system so some of the very important event or high priority task will also not be able to interrupt the executing process right it may cause certain challenges or issues right if a process is stuck in the critical section if a process is executing and anyhow let's say process is stuck inside the critical section and because the process is executing inside the critical section interrupt modules are disabled so no other process can interrupt it and the executing process is stuck then we may require to restart the system or there are different kind of issues may arise okay so hard reboot may be required because of such kind of hardware based solutions so when this interrupt disabling we need to incorporate for process synchronization we need to be very cautious about it how to use when to use and how to deal with the such kind of situation when let's say a process is stuck inside the critical section right so let's discuss the another another hardware based solution is test and set instruction so the test and set instruction is a hardware instruction used to synchronize the access of shared resource in multi threaded or multi processor environment it is used to implement locks to ensure that only one thread or process can access the shared resource at a time right the operation is performed atomically atomically means if an instruction or a function is having n number of instructions to be executed let's say instruction 1 2 
4 and so on let's say n number of instructions are there if this these all are instruction associated to one common task or function if that is atomic in nature either all the instructions need to be executed in a single go or none so let's say n minus 1 instructions has been successfully executed but last one is not executed that means all these instructions will be cancelled out okay so either all will be performed or none like banking transactions so in banking let's say we insert the atm card we type the pin enter the amount and press enter right before dispatch if anything happens and the cash is not dispatched the previously then all these things will be cancelled out so that is a kind of atomic operation right so test and set is an atomic operation so the meaning is it cannot be interrupted or printed by the processes or thread in in between the instruction test a specific memory location to see if it is set to a particular value and if it is sets the value to the new value right so let's look at the structure of this the structure of test and set look like this let's say there is a boolean variable or boolean function it is taking a boolean variable pointer and it is also returning a boolean value okay and when we call it so let's say we are using test and set here when we are calling we are passing lock here okay and this lock initially we consider the lock is false right so this lock address we are copying here so that means the address of lock will be copied in target variable okay and this target variable the value of target we are copying in rv so initially you assume that the lock initially the lock is false so i am writing here initially lock is false so when the lock is false and you are passing the address of lock so the value of this particular target pointer it is false so this false value we are allocating to rp rp means any variable like return value okay so this rv is having false value here now after this line this value of this lock will become true because this is having the address of lock and this value are setting as true so that that means lock will become true and then we this function will return this rv and rv is having false so that means if initially lock was false this test and set operation is going to return false value so if the false value is getting returned that means this while loop will break the process will come out of this because this condition will be treated as false and once the process will come out from this while loop the process will start executing inside the critical section right so assume that process p1 is executing here and meanwhile the process p1 is inside the critical section p2 request the critical section and try to execute the test and set this particular code so when p2 comes now this time you remember that the value of this log is true the value of log is true so when this operation will be called the value of target target is having address of log and that is true so the true value will be copied in rv so this time rv is getting true now you are setting this value as true it is already true so again you are setting true it doesn't change the previous value so the value of log is still true and you are returning rv so this time rv will return true value okay so when the true value will be returned this time for process p2 if this is true then this while loop will keep on executing and the process 
will stuck here in this loop again and again because the value again and again you are getting true so there is nothing to do inside this loop so the process will keep on executing while loop and process will not be able to reach out the critical success right when p1 will finish the execution of critical section p1 will set this lock as false and as soon as the lock will become false if this lock will become false this rv will get the value of lock that is false so this return value will become false and if this will become false the p2 was stuck here earlier so p2 will break this loop because this value is false p2 start executing the critical section so i hope you can understand how this test and set is satisfying the condition of mutual exclusion okay now let's discuss the next the next is swap instruction so how does swap works the swap instruction as the name suggests it is swapping two values okay so let's say there are two boolean variables a and b it will swap the value of a to b and b to a right now how we are using it to synchronize the process to solve the critical section problem or to achieve the mutual exclusion it is given here initially the lock i am considering as false so initially the lock is false and this loop let's say process p1 is executing so the process p1 comes and start executing this code now the key is true initially it is setting key as true if key is true it is checking while key is equal to true you just call swap and you are swapping the value of lock to key and the value of key to lock so you focus here lock we have initially set as false so lock is false and key is true so after this swap operation what will happen after this swap operation what will happen if i am saying lock is false so lock is false i am saying f and key is true so the value of key is copying to lock and the value of lock is getting copied to key so after this execution the key will become false and once the key will become false this condition the key is equal to true will become false so once this condition will become false the process will come out from this while loop and start executing the critical section right but if both are having true values then again the key will become true so let's say if p is executing inside the critical section if p is inside the critical section that means key is having value false key is having value false but but lock is having value true okay because we have swapped here earlier lock was false key was true and before entering to the critical section the p1 is setting the value of key is false but lock is true okay so let's say p1 is executing here and p2 comes and start executing this critical uh, this code so p2 set the key as true now it checks whether key is true so key is already true we have set here now it is swapping the values so because lock is already set true by p1 because p1 is executing inside the critical section and true has been set as true by p2 so lock and key both are true so if you swap the value of key to lock and lock to key ultimately the key is still true so if the key is true this while loop this condition is true if this condition is true this this particular code will again and again keep on executing so the process p2 will stuck here in this loop p2 will not reach out the critical section once the p1 will come out of the critical section it will execute this line and once this line will be executed the lock will become false and once the lock will become false if this swap instruction will be called the value of lock will be copied to key so key will become false and once the key will become false this loop will break and the process will be execute critical section right so i hope 
you can understand the use of these three different ways how we can deal with desynchronization problem with the help of hardware based solutions so in this session we have discussed three different methods disabling interrupts test and set and swap instruction i hope it is clear to everyone so i'm closing this session thank you everybody for connecting see you in the next session